Hi, my name is Ivan, and if you're watching this video, then my new game, Alive Paint, is now finally out on Steam. Alive Paint is a digital coloring book that animates itself. In other words, when you fill a picture from it with color, it springs into life and performs a little animation as a reward for your efforts. Now, how did I go from developing games to making a coloring book, and why did it take so long? In my previous devlog video, I shared my plans about going on a game dev pilgrimage. I wanted to make one game per month for as long as possible, and failed right on the second project. You see, my girlfriend is really into coloring stuff with pens, paint or markers, and I thought that if a game would only take me a month to make, why not to experiment? I asked myself, what can I do to give a digital coloring book an advantage over a physical one? Because, you know, we people like tangible stuff. It's fun to arm yourself with a colorful pen and make it dance all over the sheet of paper. Replicating that on a computer screen just isn't enough. It won't feel nearly as good. So I pulled an ace out of my sleeve. Moving pictures. Unless you are a young wizard and rude to some magical school, you probably don't see images jumping around on a piece of paper very often. On a computer screen, however, it's really easy to achieve that and I decided to take advantage of that. The project started nicely. Everything was going smoothly, I quickly figured out how to make a simple paint bucket tool in Unity and started working on the levels. This anchor level was the first one I made and I spent most of my time working on all sorts of stuff while staring at it. Among other things, I made a working user interface, improved the coloring mechanics and made it possible to color the background and foreground. In other words, after making one level, I immediately jumped to working on polishing the single picture experience and because of that it seemed like I was doing well on the schedule. Only after all that was done, the horrible realization came to me. In a game like this one, about 90% of work is making levels. Each picture is unique and you can't reuse any assets to speed up this process. To elaborate, here is a list of things I had to do to make every single one of these levels. Since I was using Unity to make the animations, I decided that each picture had to have only one frame per object. I couldn't use frame by frame animation because that would just multiply the amount of work. I would never have finished the game had I decided to use it. However, I also couldn't come up with many objects that I could make fun animations with by basically only rotating, scaling and moving them. Hence, figuring out what to draw was already quite a difficult problem. After that, I had to sketch out the picture and later refine the outlines. And honestly, this was the easiest part of making this game. Because at this point, the work has only just begun. The next step is adding a new layer with a white paint blob for each individual colorizable part of the image. These blobs are the key elements that allow the pictures in the live paint to be colorized through code. After exporting all that, setting the proper pivot points and reattaching all the image parts to one another, it was time to deal with the colliders. These colliders define the areas on the screen that the players can click in order to add color to the corresponding part of the image. To be more precise, each collider is responsible for one or more white paint blobs that I mentioned earlier. And Unity didn't handle the polygon colliders very well on its own, often leaving lots of empty spaces or making very imperfect outlines. That's why I had to adjust every single collider by hand. And trust me, that took a hell lot of time. Finally, I needed to make that animation that I had in mind on step 1. Actually, never mind. That's still not everything. I also had to make new sound effects for every animation and the level selection icon for every picture in the game. For all the 46 levels currently in the game, that's 46 icons and 236 sound effects. And that's about what it took to make these levels. If only I focused on the content first, I could have either dumped the idea entirely or at least tried to come up with a better and quicker way to do things. Instead, having finished all the main functions of the game, I just couldn't quit it anymore. Like, there was simply too much effort already put into it. This feeling was also reinforced by a really cool artwork I received from Crow Ring and amazing soundtracks from Hypersleep. When there was so much stuff already made specifically for this project, I felt like the game had to leave up to these things. Which is both a blessing, because I finished the game in the end, and a curse, because it was really hard. 
By the way, if you'd like to gain access to some secret knowledge like these awesome people currently listed on the screen, please consider supporting me and my projects on Patreon. You'll learn exactly how much time this game took me to make and what specifically this time was spent on, how much money it earned after one week on Steam, and also receive regular updates on the things I'm working on right now. And all that for as little as $1 per month. As a bonus for those who made it this far in the video, here's a funny and scary moment that happened to me during development. To save some time, I place objects that are present in every level into a prefab, which can be seen as a group of objects or just a template, and then start every level from that prefab. If I were to accidentally apply the changes to this prefab, however, almost every level in the game would receive the changes I made, and that's exactly what happened. When I was working on the mushroom level, to my dismay I saw that my entire game turned into mushrooms. I remember that it wasn't exactly easy to revert, but looking back, this was just funny. Finally, after all the hurdles were already behind, I added some final touches to various things in the game. To list a few of them, I turned the title screen into a playable level, added level complete animation and sound effect, and implemented save files for those who'd like to share the game with their family or friends. Also, I made what I call a screenshot transition, a loading icon, and a button that allows players to switch levels without returning back to the menu. And that's it for the development of Alive Paint. Thank you for watching this devlog. The next one will likely come out when I finish my next game, and having learned from my mistakes, I won't make any promises as to when that's going to happen. If you'd like to give my new game a try, the link to the Steam page is waiting for you in the description to this video. There you'll also find links to my Twitter, where I post short gameplay videos from my games, and a Patreon blog with regular updates about the newest projects. And all of you who are still here, I wish you all to have a wonderful day! Farewell.